Hi, this is Stephen here from Share Navigator with the market review for the week beginning March the 27th, 2017. So I'm just going to go through our current portfolio and our watch list. I'm going to do that very quickly today because the third element I want to focus on, and it's really teeing up the next seminar we're going to do, it's all based on um, what would should we be looking out for when we're trying to establish the value of a company. So I have a little spreadsheet I want to talk you through there, um, and I'll, I'll do a very brief presentation on that. So first of all, anyway, last Friday, um, Trump had his first major setback in the US. That he couldn't get the, the health care bill through at all, couldn't get it through basically his own party. Um, which creates a little bit of volatility in the market. Um, the markets actually didn't sell off that much, which was unusual. I thought it would have been worse. Um, and there's, I suppose it raises questions about the ability now to implement the tax cuts and all the other bits and pieces of policy which, which Trump um, had intended to do. And remember, the rally in the market was really built on the idea that he would actually be able to get through what he wants to get uh, through in Congress, but it doesn't look like he's going to get it all his own way. And I suppose the market is now reevaluating what can he or can't he get done. So, to to cut to the chase, our view on the S and P five hundred is that you know the fair value right now is at about two twenty two twenty two. Having said that, we do believe between now and the end of the year, it could trade up as high as 240 again. And then next year, we'd probably see a high of 250. Um, so our trading range for the S&P 500 this year, or the SPY, is 210 to 240. Just looking at our portfolio here, you can see Southwest Airlines. We've sold these two stocks. We made nice gains on them. Royal Caribbean uh, is still performing very well for us. We're up 32% on that. Striker is performing well. That's going ex dividend in on Wednesday, so we're going to hold on to it. We're going to take the dividend, and then we'll probably sell off the stock, and um, because it's gone way over our target price here, and we'll have made a nice gain on it. Whirlpool, um, a bit of a pullback last week with the overall market. Um, it's doing okay for us. We're up eight percent since we've done it, but we still think that's an opportunity to buy that stock. Abvoy again, we think is still an opportunity to buy. Our target is ninety dollars on it, and we're up twelve percent. The two stocks that we haven't performed well on, the first one, Gilead, um, our view is sell it at 75. Um, we're, we're in it at 84.68. So uh, our view is at the moment, just based on the current information that's available out there, um, we want to get out at it at 75. And Target, we still think we're going to make a profit on this. Um, at the moment, the market hates it. Um, but we do think they'll turn it around. And um, even... Even if they don't turn it around, it's still worth about $65 at the moment. So that's our view there. In terms of our watch list, um, most of the stocks came down last week with the except, exception of Canon, which went up. FedEx is now getting very, very um, interesting here. We'd like to buy it at 175 So we're getting down to that level. Their earnings were good, but they weren't exceptional. Um, for the terrible earnings last week and the share price has gone below our buy price so we're being forward now at this stage we do automatic orders in there we still think the stock is worth about $15 but at the minute until they actually you know meet their guidance they've missed guidance and the market expectations for quite a while now so um, it's probably be under pressure in the short term so uh, but we still see a 12 to 18 month target price there $15 Qualcomm 56.92, we'd be buying that at 53, and eBay and so on and so forth. So we've explained this before. Really what I want to spend uh, the, the rest of the session doing here is talking about this stock analysis tool. And this is what's going to form the basis of our next seminar. So we're going to move away from options. And a lot of people are asking me and going, Steve, how are you getting your target prices for stocks, etc. like that? So what I've done here is an example with Apple. So um, we've Put in Apple here. We've just put in the ticker symbol as AAPL. Uh, the share price when I did up this form was 140.64. The earnings per share for the last four quarters is 8.39. The dividend yield is 1.62 percent. The size of the company is 737 billion, and it's currently trading at 17 times earnings. So there's really two steps to trying to evaluate a company. The first one is the historical analysis. In other words, how well has it performed in the past? And then second of all, you've got to look at your analyst estimates. That's the next part, and that's where we get our target prices from. And when you're doing the historical analysis, you're really looking for demonstration from the company that they can actually grow their sales and their profits. They're the two key areas we need to look at. 
So what we've done here is we've got year one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got the current year. So we're kind of working backwards here. So in the last four quarters, in terms of sales, Apple has sold 218.1 billions worth of product. Then last year it sold 215.6 billions worth of product. So what we're looking for there is um, evidence of sales growth, and we're seeing that there. Two, two thousand the year before that now the sales actually dropped, so that was pretty interesting. So what we're looking here is for consistency in terms of sales growth, and of course Apple had a bit of a blip there, uh, and and that's why a lot of analysts got a little bit antsy about Apple as well. Remember the iPhone sales, etc. So what we're looking at here is the sales growth percentage from year to year. So we're looking at, again, 44% massive sales growth, 9% then, 7% sales growth, 27%, and then there was negative sales growth the year before last. So we're talking here, it's really important to look at growth because that's what the the markets focus on. So I don't intend to kind of go through this with a fine uh, two comb with you now. This is just a quick market update. But I want to give you an idea of what we're looking into in the companies. And this is just a synopsis of it. We look into a lot more, of course. Um, we do earnings growth, profit growth, etc. And then we look at net profit growth. And that's important to distinguish the difference between earnings per share and net profit. Because earnings per share can be manipulated in a number of ways, whereas net profit is net profit. It's, it's not as easy to manipulate or to use financial engineering to make the numbers look better. And what you're seeing here, for example, is Apple are, are kind of consistently... Um, grown their earnings per share which is pretty good it's you know grown from 631 to 839 which is okay um but if you actually looked at the net profit growth recently and there's a bit of evidence in here it's not been as high and that would suggest that apple is actively buying back their own shares to grow their earnings per share number and we'll explain that again in the seminar and you can see that down here when we look at the shares outstanding you can see there like five years ago apple had 6.6 .6 billion shares outstanding you know fast forward the clock they've only got 5.4 billion shares so that's a good thing and it's a positive for investors but what you need to be aware of it's also artificially making their earnings growth look better than it actually is because if the company is removing shares out of the system earnings per share will obviously grow based on the number of shares that they've taken out of the system. So it's important for you to understand that. Um, and it's important to keep an eye on the shares outstanding. Then we're going to move on to future estimates in terms of sales and earnings growth. And then what we've got is investor ratio analysis. So we're looking here at the historical PE ratios or multiple of earnings. And you can see there over the last five years, Apple has traded at about 13.72 times earnings. Now, at the moment, it's trading at you know 17 times earnings so investors at the minute are pricing in a lot of good stuff for apple based on their historical norms but if we were to go back to their norms and look at the earnings per share growth for next year which is you know or estimates for next year it's ten dollars and eight cents we've completed here a little matrix that gives us a low target price a high target price and an average target price and you can see here at the moment that the low target price could be as low as $115, which will be a 17% fall from here. The high target price, if Apple continued to trade at the lofty multiples it's doing, would be a 24% increase. And then the average or the normal range would mean an end of year target for Apple of $138. So we're talking about the end of 2018. So you can see here that for us, that's why we're not so positive on Apple anymore. We think it's just too expensive to buy at these levels because the upside isn't enough between now and the end of 2018 we're talking about you know 20 months for it to grow 24 percent on the high side and and we think they're just a little bit uh, lofty then we get down to our price to sales and that's another investor ratio now price to sales you would normally use on kind of growth stocks or companies that might have negative profits or don't have profits and you need some way to value them price to sales is usually a much better way to value those type of companies um but we did it for apple as well anyway and again we're going to show you in the seminar how to get this data and how to use it and where to get the data um but if you look at the price to sales normally apple trades at about 3.1 times 
their price to sales and we plug that into their estimates going forward you're actually looking at a low of 109 a high of 155 and an average target of 130 and again that's based on the end of 2018 so that's why with Apple at 130 we kind of said well we're happy to get out of it now at these levels because we just felt that the upside wasn't there anymore yes the market has brought it on up and yes they've had one very good quarter but a quarter doesn't make a trend so I just wanted to give you a brief highlight of this spreadsheet here and that it's going to be worth your while to come to the next seminar. We're going to go through this in detail. We're going to show you where to get the information from and we're going to go through it line by line and explain exactly what each metric means. But I just wanted to give you a quick feel for how we get target prices on individual stocks um, and some of the basic research that you can do. This is not rocket scientist. To most of you, you'll be able to understand this. Some of you might be scratching your head wondering what are all these pieces of data but it's really not rocket science and it's about just using your common sense here so um just teeing up here what we're going to cover in the next seminar and we we'll let you know when that's on it's either going to be towards the end of april the middle or the end of april but we'll send out a text very 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 soon on that okay this is stephen from share navigator i think volatility is is on the cards for the for the next little while which is going to be great for the option traders um, don't be jumping into the market keep your price targets um, solid so don't be jumping in to buy just for the sake of buying make sure you pick your price and you stick that in as a limit order okay thanks for tuning in and bye for now